Hi everyone and welcome to NameHero.com. In this video I want to go over a couple different security um, aspects for your VPS with us here at NameHero. Um, if you're watching this course on um, our blog, NameHero.com slash startup, then you know I'm doing a course called VPS Hosting 101 that discusses all the ins and outs to VPS hosting and kind of how to better use your VPS for your business. Um, it's a common myth that VPS hosting is complicated because you're actually building out your own private server, but using our services here at Name Hero, everything is managed, so anything that gets complicated, we're here to help um, completely. Uh, but one of the things about running your own VPS is security. And our team is more than willing to help you go through this process, but there's a couple things that you can do personally to your server to secure it. Um, one of the reasons why I recommend that you do this because you get to actually customize a couple things here that only you know. And then, of course, if you need help, you can ask our support team. We're more than willing to help you, or we could even do this for you. Uh, but I do want to walk you through just so you know how to do this. So there's three things that I want to teach you how to do in this video. Uh, the first thing is how to change the port that SSH listens to. Um, by default, SSH listens to port 22. So if someone's coming to hack your website or hack into your server, they're going to they're gonna brute force port 22. They're going to keep trying to get in there. Now, while we have it firewalled and all that, and after so many failed login attempts, attempts they'll get banned, um, what's a much simpler solution is just changing that. Instead of making the SSH port 22, change it to a random port that they don't even think of. Um, that way they have to guess the port, then the username, then the password. But then we're going to take things one step further. We're then going to disable password authentication on your server, and I'm going to show you how to use a private key, meaning that you're going to have a key on your computer, so only your computer with that key can SSH into the server. It keeps things extremely secure. Now, if you're using Web Host Manager, chances are you're not going to need to SSH in a lot. But those of you that do, um, you can feel free knowing that it's very secure. Um, once you change the SSH port, turn off password authentication. Uh, for the most part, your server is pretty secure um, from that standpoint because you're going you're to reduce those or you're going to pretty much eliminate a lot of the brute force login attempts because if it doesn't even accept a password, uh, then the only chance a hacker has of getting is getting into your web host manager and actually adding their key to your server, which is easy to see. Um, so let's start here. Let's um, first change the port. So what we're going to do is we want to go into um, Web Host Manager and we want to open up a port. So right now I'm on um, my main page here for my server here and I got here by going to our main dashboard. I'm just going to walk you through here just so it's um, step by step. Um, I click on Cloud Web Hosting and then I select my server which is a Hero 2 gigabyte. Um, and then I'm going to get my password from here. I'm going to copy it. And I'm going to go into Web Host Manager. I'm going to proceed. It's secure because it is my server, my IP. I'm going to enter root, and then I'm going to enter my password. Now, once I get inside of Web Host Manager, I need to open up the port for SSH, the new port that it's going to listen to. So I want to type in firewall, and you're going to see under plugins, configure um, server security and firewall. This is a CSF firewall that we install for you. Um, as soon as you build out your um, deploy, your VPS, um, this is deployed. You can see there's an update available. You can feel free to update it now, or it will automatically update later on in the evening. Um, but we need to open up that port. So to do so, we are going to go into firewall configuration and then um, and open up that port. So we're going to scroll down to firewall configuration and click it. And we're going to look for the TCP in. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go control find TCP underscore N. And these are the ports that allow incoming connections. So you can see right here port 22 is open. Now we're going to check, we're going to add our own port for SSH. So I'm just going to go right to the end here towards the end. I like to do it in numer numerical order. And the SSH port we're going to use is 5622. So I'm going to enter 5622 and a comma. So right there, that's going to be our new SSH port. So I've opened that port up in the firewall. So now I'm going to go down here, all the way to the bottom, and save these changes. Change and restart. OK, now the port's opened, but now we need to actually connect to SSH so we can tell the server um, what the new port is. So let's, um, let's go do that really quick. So now we're going to go into our terminal and we need to connect to the server. So we're going to go into SSH, 
We're going to type in root at alpha.namehero.org. That is our server host name. Remember, we added in another video, we added our A entry. It's going to ask us for our password because we're still using password authentication. So we're going to just paste our password that we use to get in Webhost Manager. Let's give it just a few here to load up. And um, once we turn off root logins, then it's automatically going to log us in without checking the password. And see, that's the beauty of it. So you don't have to worry about copying and pasting or remembering your password because it's just going to log you in knowing that that key is on your computer. So we'll do that here um, in the next step. Okay, so now we're logged in. So now we need to actually define the new port for SSH. So this is in a file called sshd underscore config. So if you don't, if you're not sure where it's located, I just like to type in locate sshd underscore config, and you can see it's right here in slash etc slash ssh slash sshd underscore config. I'm just going to copy that. We're going to go into nano and paste that file. Nano is a file editor. Um, that I like to use an SSH. So we just type in nano and then we paste that file. We hit enter and you can see as we scroll on down the file here, port 22. So we want to change this. So we're going to delete this pound sign or hashtag as you would call it um, because that's going to uncomment this out. Now we want to change this to the new port that we just opened. Now remember, we, we decided on 5622. That's just a random number I just pulled out of my hat. It can be just a two-digit number. I like to use four digits because it's a little bit more secure. So 5622, and we are now going to go to Command and X, to, or Command X for exit, and we're going to save our changes, and yes. Um, so now that actually resets our port for SSH. Now we need to restart the SSH service. So inside of Webhost Manager, we're going to type in SSH, restart SSH, do you want to restart it? Yes. And it started successfully. So now the next time we log in, we're going to have to use our new port. Um, so if we, um, it's still letting us in right now, but now if we exit and we try to get in here, port 22 connection refuse. That is what you want. You don't want the port to work because we've disabled that. Now, if we go over here, instead of SSH, we're going to do dash P. Um, and we decided on 5622. Now it's going to accept our connection to the new port. So now it's going to ask us for our password. We're going to paste the password that we had. And I don't have it. Let me grab it really quick. Don't even try to try this password because after this video, I'm going to change the root password. Um, it's taking a second here just because we have password auth on, um, but it's going to accept this password. Um, but after we do this, we are going to change, um, or we're going to disable password logins. But I want to demonstrate how we change that um, port first. Um, but while we're waiting on this to accept, there we go. So now it gets in here. It says there's one last failed login because that was us when we just tried to log in here just a second ago using the wrong pass. Um, so now we are in using the new port. Uh, so now you're one more level secure because people that try to log in with port 22, it's not going to work. It's off. Next is getting rid of the password login. So what I like to do is you just type in password. And you can see right here, SSH password authentication tweak or authorization tweak. Enter here. Disable. See, it's currently enabled. For security reasons, you should disable it. Disable it. Bam. It's disabled. Now, you cannot SSH into this server with a password. You have to use your keys. So we go to manage root SSH keys, and you can see there is no keys here. So now we have to generate a key or import a key. If you're using a Mac, and if you use a Windows, it's a little bit different. Um, but for a Mac, I'm going to show you how to do it. Now, if you're using a Windows, then I'll have to link you to some directions, because unfortunately, I don't have a Windows computer here to demonstrate on. Um, so first off, I'm going to exit out of here. Now, if you're using a Mac, to generate an SSH key, you just type, first thing you do is um, you need to navigate and see if you actually have an SSH key on your computer. Um, so you're going to go into cd, this tilde, backslash dot SSH, 
ls this ill, and you're going to look for this idrsa or idrsa.pub. This is your public key right here. If you have this, this means that you already have one. And so you can copy this um, key inside this file and import it in here. I'm going to assume that you don't, because if you do, you probably already know how to get it. And um, so I'm going to show you how to generate this. So if you don't have this, you can generate one by typing in the following, ssh. And I'll um, copy this in a blog post so you can copy and paste it. keygen t rsa c. And then I like to use an email address because this is how you just identify whose key is who. So demo at namehero.com. The, the only um, thing that the email address is for is because it just says whose the key it is. So we're going to click enter. It's going to say that there is a file uh, and, and says overwrite it. Yes. Um, if you want a passphrase on the file, um, which means if you probably if you share this computer with someone, you want to do that because if someone tries to access this file, it's going to prompt you for a password. Tremendously big pain in the butt if it's your computer. If it's just your computer, I would leave it blank. Okay, so now this is the random image. Don't ever share that with anyone. Um, I'm going to actually erase this as soon as I do this video um, because that's your private image and of course someone can gain access to your system or your server with that. Um, so now we need to copy the public key to import it. So we are going to um, go in here and we're going to copy the key. Let me get my um, command in here. Just one second here. And I'm going to copy and paste this um, command for you so you have it. So you just type in cat id underscore rsa dot pub. Okay, now this is our key. So we're going to take this now and copy it. Import key. And we're going to paste it in the, this is our public key. So we're going to paste it, import. After we import it, return to SSH manager, manage authorization, authorize. Now, now when we try to SSH into the server, SSH-P, remember we are going to use our new port of 5622. Five, five, I might get that straight root at alpha.namehero.org. So now, instead of asking for a password, it's going to accept, hopefully, um, if we did those steps correctly, it's going to accept our key that we've just generated. So it's not going to ask us for a password anymore. Um, because remember, we disabled password authentication on the server. So now we cannot get into the server um, with a password. We have to use our key. And so any computer that you're on, you have to make sure that you port over this key. So if you have, like me, multiple computers, um, then you have to make sure you port this key over to your other computer. And you can see now I'm in, um, I've SSH'd in, password auth is off, and um, I'm using my key, my key pair. Um, again, if you're watching this video and you have malicious intent, I am deleting this key um, off this machine and off this server um, as soon as this video has concluded. Okay, so now that we have done that, um, we have now disabled SSH, we've disabled password logins, we've um, now made it um, impossible. We've changed the port and we've disabled password logins. So those are two big things that we've done to the server. Um, the next thing has to do with auto SSL. Um, if you want to have free and automatic SSL certificates on your computer, on your server, um, you want to install that. Now, if we go to, we can type in auto SSL, auto SSL, or let's just type in SSL. Manage auto SSL. You're going to see. Um, Como has the contract with cPanel where they're automatically installed. I personally like Let's Encrypt. So there's a script we can run to install Let's Encrypt. So let's run it and um, install Let's Encrypt. I feel like Let's Encrypt just does a better job than Como. I think Como is later to the party, but I like Let's Encrypt. So, um, and I just opened my Skype. Sorry about that. Okay, so now we're on the command line. We're going to run this script, um, slash scripts, slash install, underscore let's, underscore encrypt, underscore auto SSL, underscore provider. Um, it's just a really quick script that enables let's encrypt. 
And again, our support team will do this for you if you would like us to do that. Um, and we're, we'll also change your SSH port. Okay, so now that has um, installed. Let's click Manage Auto SSL. And now we see Let's Encrypt. We'll click it, agree to the terms, agree to registration, and save. And now Let's Encrypt is on your server, and you can click Manage Users to run Let's Encrypt. You can check it. We can go back to our logs and make sure that it ran. You can see um, it has a valid SSL certificate, so it did nothing. If it did not, it would install one. So now in this video, we have changed SSH port. We have disabled logins. We have generated a key and added our secure key. And we've enabled Let's Encrypt. So those are three big security things that you need to do to your server as soon as you get it. And I recommend that you customize the SSH port so that the, the bad guys that are going to be defaulting to 22, defaulting to password auth, they're not going to be able to get in um, using those. It's just going to make a, a challenge for them. If you have any questions about this, let me know. I'm more than willing to um, help you out with it. Um, and our support team too as well. So just, you know, you can submit a ticket, give us a call or shoot us a live chat and we'd be more than willing to help you out with it. But that's how you secure or take some steps to securing your VPS here at Name Hero. Um, I also recommend, and I might do this in another video, two-factor authentication on your web host manager. Um, this way that if someone has to get in your web host manager, um, to, to add keys. This way you have to have a two-factor. So I recommend adding that as well. Um, I'll include that in a, in a little bit later of a tutorial, but I think it's pretty self-explanatory on how to set that up. So let us know if you have any questions. Thanks so much for watching and good luck with your server security.